There's a connection between appreciating yourself and appreciating and respecting time. People who appreciate themselves understand and respect the use of time. Here's what I call the best-kept secret of the rich. Interesting discovery that I made one day. I couldn't believe it when I found out that rich people have about 24 hours a day. And poor people have about 24 hours a day. Wouldn't that drive you mad until you found out what the difference was? I'm telling you the difference is in the management of the time. A few simple disciplines practiced every day and your whole life can change. Your future can change. Your income can change. But the rest of it is getting a handle on the management of time. Now, we invested one whole session in this series to proper self-discipline. And guess what? Discipline shows up again here, as it does everywhere. Discipline is also important in how you manage your time, the 24 hours given to you every day. So I want to give you a few things that might help you to get a handle on the management of time. Here's the first one. Ignore the subject. Ignore the subject. That's not a bad suggestion. Somebody says, well, I've been behind all my life. Doesn't look like that's going to change. Forget it. I like that approach. At least it's honest. Nobody's ideas of success and time management are right for you unless they can be applied by you. We've already said that it's important to resist all stereotypes for success, to resist all models of success. So here's one alternative to time management. Ignore the subject. Don't let somebody pressure you by saying, here's what you've got to do with your time. Resist all that. Take advice, but don't take orders. Let somebody give you their opinions and then accept the ones you want to accept. And the ones you don't want to accept, don't accept. Resist all attempts to pressure you into becoming the model of success. Resist all that. Do it on your own time, the time that's right for you. Now, here's another alternative to time management. Step down to an easier task. Step down to something more manageable, something that doesn't require that much time, that much effort. That's an alternative. Some people in sales are promoted to being manager. They say, oh, now I've got to be a manager. Heck with this, it takes 14 hours a day worrying about everybody i'm getting back out in the field get my sales job back and that's a good alternative somebody works for a company and says oh i'd love to own one of these companies then they find out what it takes to own one of those companies what kind of pressure what kind of hours can't play golf three days a week and finally says hey you know i've had it up to here with all the headaches and trauma and dealing with all these people's lives and running a company and being responsible for all the stuff. I'm going to step down. And that's a good alternative. It really is. Don't let yourself be pressured when stepping down might give you a better lifestyle. Little girl complained that her father never played with her. She said, Daddy comes home, got his briefcase full of papers, says hello to me, pats me on my head, and disappears. She said, how come my daddy can't play with me when he comes home? And her mother explained and said, look, your daddy works very hard. He loves you very much. But at the office, he's got so much to do that he can't get it all done. So he has to bring the rest of it home. So that's why your daddy can't play with you. And the little girl says, why don't they just put him in a slower group? not a bad idea and i offer that here if you're too busy to play with your kids you need to join a slower group you've got to have time for your family i went for some things that cost me too much in those early days if i'd known how much it was going to cost i never would have paid the price so you've got to weigh the consequences how to make everything fit Sometimes that extra money isn't worth it. If it pressures you into losing touch with somebody you really care about. So family must be considered here as well. You say, what do you really want in life? 
focal point on getting your life organized always comes back to the importance of your deciding for yourself what it is you really want and what it is you really want in each part of your life with regard to your income, with regard to your family, with regard to your health, with regard to your long-term financial goals, social and community, church, personal development, and so on. Um, you decide exactly what you want and in what order of priority, and your priorities will change. It's interesting to understand that, that because everybody listening to this leads a busy life, your priorities are very much like the pistons in an engine that's moving ahead. They're constantly moving up and down. They're all good. So today, one will be right at the top, top priority. And as you deal with that, it'll, it'll go down. There'll no longer be a top priority. Something else will come to the top. So your priorities, like pistons in an engine, are constantly changing and moving up and down. And you have to be constantly changing and organizing your time. You could have a completely worked out schedule of time management, then an emergency could occur or an opportunity could open up. And suddenly your whole order of priority changes. Hmm. And you have to change to, to respond to it. But the final analysis is always, where is it you want to end up at the end of the day? What are your long-term goals? You, you start off by realizing that there's always something that is more important than something else. So you write down everything that you have to do or that you can do to achieve the key goals. And, and, and mostly during the week, we're thinking about our business goals. And uh, one of the things that I teach in my programs is to think in terms of your hourly rate. And your hourly rate is the amount of money that you want to earn per hour. And I encourage people to take the number 2,000 and divide it into their annual income goal. So let's say your annual income goal is $50,000. Yeah. Then you divide that by 2,000, it comes out to $25 an hour. Well, from that moment forward, you ask, what are the activities that I perform during the day that pay $25 an hour or more? If your annual income goal is $100,000 divided by 2,000, that's $50 an hour. Right. And you absolutely refuse to do anything that does not pay you your desired hourly rate. You mm -hmm. don't make photocopies uh, or uh, read the newspaper or drive around listening to music and things like that. You say, wait a minute, but I pay someone else 25 or $50 an hour to do what I'm doing right now. And if the answer is no, you stop doing it and you start doing things that pay your desired hourly rate. Huh. It's, a, it's a very simple principle and once you have it, by the way, your income will double. Because then what you do is you just say, as a priority, I only do things to pay my desired hourly rate or more. I don't do anything else. You delegate, you outsource, eliminate, you just simply discontinue activities that don't pay the kind of money you want to earn. Because because if, you, if, if integrity is a value of yours, then you must be honest enough to realize that if you do not do $25 an hour work, you're not going to be paid $25 an hour. In other words, in a great shakeout, by the end of the year, you're not going to get $25 an hour for doing $5 an hour work, making an extra pot of coffee, shuffling papers, talking to your co-workers, and so on. This doesn't pay $25 or $50 an hour. Now, in sales, we say that there's only three things that pay $25 or $50 or $100 an hour, and that's prospecting, presenting, and following up and closing sales. Yeah. And it's absolutely amazing how many people in business forget this. There's only three things you get paid for, and that are the, these are the, the re revenue-generating activities. Everything else is warm-up, warm-down, uh, preparation, and everything else. So you have to keep saying, uh, what are the three things that I do that pay me my highest hourly rate? And then another question I force people to ask is this. If you could only do one thing all day long, what one thing would you do that would pay you the most? And then I have forced them to ask another question in terms of priorities is what one skill, if you developed and did it in an absolutely excellent fashion, would contribute the most to achieving your financial goals? In other words, if you are absolutely outstanding at one thing, what one skill would help you the most to give you the highest hourly rate to achieve your income goals, which are important to every other part of your life? And I force people to think about this, and, and always the, the answers are very clear once you ask the question. Everybody knows that if I was fantastic at prospecting, if I could really get face-to-face -face with more highly qualified process to double my income. Everything else I can do, I can I can present and sell and, and follow up and so on. So what you do is you become you make a decision, set it as a goal, make a plan, organize it, organize your plan, and work every single day to become excellent at prospect. And by doing that, you will dramatically increase your hourly rate, dramatically increase your income, and make it possible for you to achieve all your other material goal. Well, I, I, I give a um, an advanced coaching program to successful entrepreneurs in San Diego, and we teach people this. The first thing we, 
we teach them on day one of the coaching program. We walk them through an analysis of all the things they do that are of high value. And then we uh, identify the tasks and activities that can be outsourced and delegated and then teach them how to delegate. One of our clients uh, is a woman who, who does mortgage uh, financing. And uh, she was basically working 14 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. And we encouraged her to get an assistant. Well, she was very reluctant to do it. Many people are reluctant to get assistants. They don't know how to hire them. They don't know how to interview them. Uh, they come from limited backgrounds. They kind of in the back of their subconscious, they don't feel that they should uh, have somebody that they're the boss of. You know, they, they have funny ideas. So she hired an assistant. And the assistant immediately scooped uh, half of her paperwork. So she hired another assistant. And the other assistant scooped the other half of her paperwork. Suddenly she had all this time available to develop more clients, which she was really good at. Within six months, she tripled her income, including paying salaries for three assistants. Wow. She now has three full-time assistants that just work and do all the paperwork. She does the one thing she does best, which is to meet with and negotiate um, new mortgages with her clients. And she's tripled her income. She now works five days a week. She finished at five o'clock. Uh, in the, in the, uh, afternoon and her assistants take care of all the busy work. And she's now tripled her income. She's making about $300,000 a year. Well, it's really interesting. That's where, that's where it all begins is when you begin to recognize that time is life. And that, uh, when I was a young man, I had the idea that time management was a skill like typing or riding a bicycle that you did every so often. And that it was like a planet that revolved around the sun of my life. Then, my whole life changed when I realized that time management is the sun and everything that you do in life are the planets that orbit around your sun. Chẳng được quên khi cơn mưa đêm lại về Em nơi quên lời thề và ta như đông chìm sâu Không cần mới em anh nhận màu yeah, ooh, Em chỉ cần mơ là bay bay yeah. Chỉ còn là những cơn mơ vô ra Cho bên mơ em không mơ hay nhẹ yeah. Anh vẫn đang mơ Chỉ cần bên em không được cần nhớ Và chỉ có em không muốn nhớ Còn người ta bên nhau như người ta
towards your friend, you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray as you fade away. Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Got a build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, I have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same I don't really wanna hurt you But I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side Maybe we could be okay Okay, okay Maybe you could be the change I need today I promise that I've never felt this way I really hope that you Will choose to stay Through all the pain I know you told your friend You're not okay And tell me what's wrong And why you never said You felt that way Try to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away As you fade away